Hey guys, so a ton of new 2022 Senate polls have just been released. If you look at the polls added just today on the 14th of July, we have six new polls from the state of Utah, a new poll from Georgia, an A-rated poll from the state of Washington, as well as new polls from Ohio and Florida. And of course, yesterday we saw a big poll come out of the state of Nevada from a minus rated Emerson College. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what these polls mean for this year's midterm elections, because all of these races are going to be crucial in determining the balance of power in the upper chamber for the next two years. And so starting off here in the state of Utah, where we now have a polling average, Evan McMullen is only behind incumbent Mike Lee by just 10.5%. And so essentially what's happened here is in 2016, Evan McMullen ran as a never Trump conservative as an independent in the 2016 election, and he was able to gain a significant following in the state of Utah. Overall, he came in fifth place, but he came in third place in the state of Utah and so now he is challenging incumbent Mike Lee in this race. And the Democratic Party did something very smart here. Instead of nominating a candidate and splitting the vote, the Democratic Party chose to endorse Evan McMullen. McMullen is still a conservative but a lot more preferable to Democrats and of course Donald Trump is not that popular in the state of Utah and so Mike Lee who is a very pro-Trump Republican is going to struggle here a little bit. He is still probably going to end up winning the race but I think that if this race does get closer Evan McMullen may actually be the next independent U.S. Senator joining Bernie Sanders and Angus King, and he would become the only conservative independent senator in the Senate. And so if you look at the latest polling numbers, Lee is still definitely significantly ahead, but this race can close up in the coming months, and we're just going to see what happens here. The state of Utah is going to be one of the most interesting races on the ballot this November. Mike Lee currently does have a significant advantage, but I mean, in a state where Donald Trump is pretty unpopular, this race can can get a lot closer. Right now, it is 45.5 to 35. It's still good for Mike Lee, but Evan McMullen, I think, is definitely doing a lot better than expected. So on the map here in the state of Utah, it is going to be currently just likely for the Republican Party, much less the solid margin that you would typically expect. And so moving on now to the crucial race in the state of Georgia between incumbent Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. Right now, according to the polling average, Warnock is ahead by 1.3% compared to Herschel Walker. Looking at the latest polls, I mean, if you look at the seven most recent polls released out of the state of Georgia, Raphael Warnock has led in five of them. One of them showed an even race, and this poll was conducted by the Walker campaign themselves. Only one poll out of the last seven has shown Herschel Walker ahead. And of course, this comes as Herschel Walker is proving to be more and more of just an objectively unelectable candidate. His stances on a lot of issues are simply not popular in the purple state of Georgia. And a lot of things about his past that are coming out are hurting him. And his polling numbers are showing that at one point in time, this race was almost guaranteed for the Republican Party. I mean, Ralphie Warnock won under a pretty special set of circumstances in 2021. He had a lot of momentum behind him. In this November, he really was not expected to have that much momentum, but with Roe v. Wade being overturned, energizing the Democratic base, and of course with the fact that Herschel Walker is proving to be more and more of an unelectable candidate, the Democratic Party is doing a lot better in this race than previously. 1.3% is the largest margin the Democratic Party has seen in this race. I mean, if you looked at the polls released before the months of April, you'll see that Herschel Walker basically led in all of the polls that were released. As you can see, if you look at the eight previous polls released after these most recent seven, Warnock only led in one of them by five points. Every single other poll showed Herschel Walker ahead. So the numbers right now should be very worrying for the Republican Party, as polls in Georgia have historically been pretty accurate. 1.3% is pretty significant for the state of Georgia. If you look at the 2021 runoff elections in Georgia, you'll see that in the special election between Warnock and Leffler, Raphael Warnock led by 2.1% on election day in terms of the polling average. And if you look at the final results, you'll see that Warnock won by exactly 2%, so it was pretty accurate. If you look at the regular election runoff in 2020, you'll see that John Ossoff won by 1.2%, and the polling average showed Ossoff up by 1.8% against incumbent David Perdue. So polling in Georgia was pretty accurate. I mean, of course, Joe Biden also won Georgia on the presidential level. If you look at the presidential polls in the state of Georgia, you would have seen that Joe Biden led by 1.2% against Donald Trump on election day, and he ended up, of course, winning 
the state by a margin of 0.2%. So the polls in Georgia are pretty accurate, and that's, this is what is so worrying for the Republican Party right now. They are down by 1.3%, and that means they really are probably down in the state. We've had a lot of pretty reliable polls. I mean, A- minus rated Quinnipiac showed Warnock up 10%. We also had B-rated polls from Change Research and Data for Progress. And so right now, the state of Georgia is definitely looking good for the Democratic Party. I mean, if you look at the odds in this race, they now have a 54% chance of winning because it's just 50 for the Republicans. Of course, this is due to a rounding error. That's why it adds up to over 100. But I mean, if you look at the GOP's chances just a couple of months ago in mid-May, they had a 64% chance of winning. Now they only have a 48% chance of winning. The Democratic Party went from 36 all the way up to 53 yesterday. Now they're up at 54. And so this race is should be very worrying for the GOP. I mean, it was almost guaranteed for them a couple of months ago. Their numbers were all the way in the 80s at one point earlier this year. But right now, Ralph and Warnock is catching up, and I think that he can win his race in the state of Georgia. So right now, according to the polls, Georgia is actually going to be lean for the Democratic Party for the first time in a very long time. Now, moving on to the state of Washington. In Washington right now, the Democratic Party is doing much better than expected. If you look at the most recent poll coming out of Washington, Patty Murray leads by 18% against Tiffany Smiley. And of course, there's only been two independent polls released for the Senate race. They were both conducted by the A-rated Survey USA. If you look at all the other polls, they were either funded by a Democratic sponsor, being the Northwest Progressive Institute, or the Tiffany Smiley campaign themselves. So right now, this is the only independent poll released from Washington in the past almost a year, and Patty Murray is ahead by 18%. I mean, the previous poll showed Murray up just 5%. This would have been an abysmal margin for the five-time incumbent, who is now running for her sixth term in office. And of course, Washington has really come a long way since Murray was first elected in 1992. It is a much more of a solid Democratic state. However, if you look at how the political sources rank this race, only two of them have Washington currently being solid Democratic, five of them have it as being likely or lean for the Democrats. So right now, the race is not that solid for the Democrats. If you look at the previous elections for Patty Murray, she has not always won by the most solid of margins. Yes, 2016, she easily defeated Chris Fiennes, but in 2010, she only won by a lean margin. 2004, it was a likely margin. 1998 was also a solid margin for Patty Murray. So she's been pretty inconsistent over the last few decades. But 2022, I think the race is easily going to go to her, but the race it may be a lot closer than expected. If you look at the odds here, though, Patty Murray is a shoe in for this race. She currently has a 95% chance of winning. But in terms of the margin, it is very likely that the margin is still going to be under 15%. But this most recent poll is definitely very good for her campaign. I mean, if you look at the three previous ones released this year, they only showed Murray up by 5, 11, and 9%. So the most recent poll from Washington shows her up by a solid margin. I think this is definitely good news for the Democratic Party. A good showing in Washington would show that the Democratic Party could do much better in other races as well nationwide. So right now, Washington is going to be solid for the Democratic Party, according to the latest poll that was released. And so moving on to the state of Ohio, we have a very key race in the state of Ohio, where Tim Ryan is doing surprisingly well against J.D. Vance. If you look at the polling average here, currently, the Democratic Party is ahead by 2%, with Tim Ryan leading over J.D. Vance with 44.8% of the electorate. I mean, the Democratic Party right now is doing better in the state of Ohio than in the state of Georgia. In Georgia, Ralph and Warnock only leads by 1.3%, but in Ohio, the Democrats are ahead by a whole two percentage points. I mean, if you look at the 2020 presidential election, Georgia went to the Democrats by 0.2%. Ohio voted for Donald Trump by 8%. Now, it is not impossible for Georgia to elect a Democrat, even though Tim Ryan is ahead. It is still relatively unlikely that he ends up winning the race. Currently, Ohio only has one Democratic senator who was re-elected in 2018, and that, of course, was Jared Brown. Who won, her, who won his third term in office in the last midterm election. If you look at how 538 rates this race, currently they give J.D. Vance an 84% chance of winning, just 16 for Tim Ryan. The betting odds are a little bit more favorable here for the Democrats. If you look at the odds here, 84% for the GOP, but 19 for for the Democrats. And I mean, a 1 in 5 chance for the Democrats to win in Ohio is still pretty good. I mean, the Democratic Party had a worse chance at winning the Senate as a whole in 2018. So the Democratic Party right now definitely does have a chance in Ohio. I think that J.D. Vance is a pretty weak candidate compared to Tim Ryan. Vance barely won his primary, even with the support of Donald Trump. And I mean, J.D. Vance really does not have any 
political experience, and that is life. You heard him. Tim Ryan is much more experienced and much more well known in the state of Ohio, and that is why he is doing so well in the polls right now. Looking at the most recent polls, the latest five polls have showed Tim Ryan ahead. Yes, three of them have been conducted all by SurveyMonkey. One of them was funded by the Tim Ryan campaign themselves, and another one was funded by Innovation Ohio, a sponsor for the Democratic Party. So right now, yes, the polls have all been skewed in favor of Tim Ryan, but Tim Ryan has still led in them, and if he was losing in these polls, I mean, that would be pretty worrying for his campaign, but even though Tim Ryan was favored, he still led in them, and really, he should not be, considering this is the state of Ohio. Now, if you look at the polls here in Ohio in 2018, this was a race that Sherrod Brown won by around 6%. Sherrod Brown was leading by much larger margins than 6% than the actual margin that he ended up winning by, which, of course, was 6%. So, Sherrod Brown did underperform the polls, and so that is makes it worrying for Tim Ryan, as, of course, he is likely to do the same. If you look at the presidential election, in the state of Ohio in 2020, you'll see that Joe Biden really did not do all that well either compared to the polling numbers. I mean, Joe Biden was expected to lose Ohio by 0.8%. He ended up losing by 10 times that margin of 8% to Donald Trump. I mean, the polls in Ohio were so close for so long. I mean, at one point, Joe Biden was ahead by around 2% consistently, but in the end, the polls failed to to see that independents were going to sway towards Donald Trump. Joe Biden really did not do that much worse than what the polling average suggested, but it was just that the independent voters basically all went to Donald Trump. And so in the Senate election this November, it is likely still that Tim Ryan is going to lose this race, but I think he is in a much better position than previously expected, as of course Ohio really is just not the purple state that it once was. So right now, Ohio, I'm still going to categorize as being lean or likely for the GOP in all my predictions, but according to the most recent polls, the Democratic Party is up by a pretty healthy 2% in this key race. Ohio right now on the map, I'm going to label also as being lean for the Democratic Party, joining the state of Georgia. And so now moving down south in the state of Florida, we also have a pretty big race here with Marco Rubio running for his third term in office. And of course, he will be challenged by Representative Val Demings. Looking at the most recent polls in this race, we do not yet have a polling average, but the most recent Survey Monkey polls show Marco Rubio up 8, 5, and 10%. I do not believe that Marco Rubio is going to win Florida by a solid margin, but I do think that a likely margin is very, very possible for the Republican incumbent. If you look at the last couple of elections here in Florida for Marco Rubio, he has been a surprisingly popular Republican in the state. In 2010, he of course defeated former Governor Charlie Crist and Kendrick Meek. This was of course a race in which the more liberal voters were split, so Marco Rubio easily won his race in 2010. In 2016, he was able to defeat Patrick Murphy by a likely margin. Margin. And in 2022, he is likely to do the same against Val Demings. He is all but guaranteed right now to win the Democratic nomination. And of course, Val Demings will not be running for re-election for her House seat. And I think that basically means that she is going to lose her seat in Congress for the next couple of years. I think Val Demings stands absolutely no chance in Florida. And I mean, if you look at the most recent trends here in 2018, the Democratic Party lost their Senate seat to Rick Scott with Bill Nelson as the three-time incumbent. And Bill Nelson's loss to Rick Scott was really the only surprising loss for the Democratic Party in 2018. They were pretty much expected to lose in North Dakota, Missouri, and Indiana, but the raise in Florida really came as a total surprise. Bill Nelson was a longtime establishment in Democratic politics in Florida, but Rick Scott still ended up winning. It was still by a very, very small margin, less than 10,000 votes, but still, this was a big win for the GOP, and the state of Florida really has not been the purple state that it had previously been. I mean, you go back to the 2000 election, Florida Florida voted for George W. Bush by 0.009%. In 2004, it was a margin of 5%. In 2008, it voted for Barack Obama by 2.8%. 2012, Obama still won it. 2016, Trump wins Florida by 1.2%. But in 2020, even though Joe Biden improved upon Trump's margin in basically every single state, Florida actually shifted to the right and voted for Donald Trump by 3.4%. If you look at the shift from 2000 to 2004, the entire country shifted to the right between those four years in favor of George W. Bush, but in 2020, the whole country shifted to the left as a whole, but Donald Trump still managed to win Florida by almost three times the margin that he did four years prior. So Florida really is not the purple state that it once was. The Democratic Party does not have that great of a chance in this state, with Val Demings as a pretty weak nominee against Marco Rubio. I think Rubio's popularity in the state just makes it so that he is pretty much invincible at this point. Val Demings has only led in one poll release 
basis was in early May, showing Val Demings ahead by 2%, even though she only had 36% support in the race overall. So right now, the race is pretty much almost guaranteed for the Republican Party. The GOP is very solid right now in Florida as a whole. The state of Florida is shifting so much to the right, and the general trends are just not looking good for the Democrats. If you look at the ratings here, four out of the seven sources have it as being likely for the GOP. Three of them have it as being lean. And I mean, of course, if you look at all of the polls, the average on RCP gives Mark Rubio a lead of 9%. And you can see here, Val Demings has only led in one poll released out of Florida. And I mean, there really have been a lot of polls released from this state. So very worrying for the Democratic Party here in Florida. But really, this was never a race that they were expected to win. Florida may really go to Marco Rubio by double digits for a second time. So right now, Florida, according to the polling numbers, is going to be likely for the GOP. And finally, moving on to the state of Nevada, another state in which the Democratic Party is doing surprisingly well and similar to the races in both Ohio and Georgia. Right now in the state of Nevada, Catherine Cortez Masto leads in the polling average by 0.8% against Adam Luxalt. If you look at the polling here, Catherine Cortez Masto has done very well in the latest polls that have been released. The last time that Adam McSalt led in a poll was all the way back in April, and this was a poll funded by a GOP sponsor, showing McSalt only ahead by just 1%. If you want to look at it, the previous independent poll where McSalt led in, this would be all the way back in the very early days in the month of April, showing Adam McSalt up by 3%. So Catherine Cortez Masto, in the most recent polls, has been doing very well. This most recent poll from Emerson College, released just a couple of days ago, shows Catherine Cortez Masto head by 3% against Adam McSoul. I mean, this is an A- rated pollster. It is not funded by any partisan sponsors. And Catherine Cortez Masto, it does fit with the overall trend that Masto is leading in this race. Currently, she's ahead by 0.8%. The polling in Nevada has not always been great. I will say that in 2018, the polls were actually a lot better for the GOP than previously thought. If you look at the race between Jackie Rosen and Dean Heller, a lot of the final polls did show Dean Heller actually leading. But of course, in 2018, Jackie Rosen was elected the new U.S. Senator from the state of Nevada by a margin of 5%. So she actually outperformed what the polls suggested in 2018. But if you look at the presidential polls in 2020, of course, Joe Biden won the state of Nevada on the presidential level by a margin of 2.4%. But the polls in 2020 were definitely a, not a lot more favorable for the Democrats than the Republicans. Joe Biden was expected to win by 5.3%. He ended up winning up by around 2.4%. If you look at the Senate election, in 2018, you'll see that the race was a little bit more favorable for the Democrats than what the polling suggested, but the polls were still off by around 2%. So right now, of course, the polling numbers in Nevada don't suggest that Catherine Cortez Masto is definitely going to win, but it is still good for the Democrats. The polling here has not always been that skewed in favor of the GOP, and the polls have not always been too far off. Typically, they're off by around 2 to 3%, which is not that bad considering how polls are off by much larger margins in other states like Ohio that we saw previously in this video. So right now, Catherine Gordes Masto, 0.8% margin. She currently has a 45% chance at victory. I mean, if you look at the numbers just a couple of weeks ago, she had a 37% chance of winning in mid-June. Right now, her numbers went all the way up to 47% just yesterday. And if you look at the 538 forecast, they actually give Catherine Gordes Masto a 51% chance at victory in the state. I mean, obviously, it is still going to be very, very close. The margin is less than 0.1% right now for the Democrats. Latest polls have been pretty much all over the place, but on average, Catherine Gwyneth Masto is very slightly ahead of Adam Luxalt, and I think that this is pretty worrying for the Republican Party. Luxalt was one of the better nominees they nominated, however, his views on abortion are going to energize the Republican base. Of course, Adam Luxalt has come out and said that he supports the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and Nevada is one of the most pro-choice states in the country, and I'm sure you can imagine why, but Adam Luxalt is going to be hurt by those comments. If you looked at his betting odds, of course, Roe v. Wade was overturned, I believe, on the 24th of June. The odds here were basically unbothered until Adam Salt made those comments a couple of days later. This is why the Democrats' odds went up so significantly in the days after Roe v. Wade was overturned. And so I think the Nevada race is going to be one that's going to be very interesting to follow in the next couple of months. Catherine Gordon's Masto, in my opinion, is still the most vulnerable Democrat running for their re-election this November. But I do think that she is in a much better position than previously thought. If you look at the polling average, she currently is ahead by 0.8%. Now, I'm also going to fill in the other states on this map, just based on how the polling numbers have typically been. 
Colorado is going to be likely for Michael Bennett. Arizona is going to be lean for Mark Kelly. Iowa is going to be likely for the GOP as well as Missouri. North Carolina will also be likely. The state of New Hampshire is going to be lean for the Democrats. Pennsylvania is going to be lean as well. And of course, Wisconsin is going to be lean actually for the Democratic Party as well. So obviously, Democrats are not going to win 53 seats. But the polling numbers right now are very favorable for the Democrats. And these latest polls continue to reaffirm that. If you look at the most recent 538 forecast that was just updated an hour ago, if you look at the forecast, the Democrats currently have now a 48% chance of winning. This is up 546 just a couple of days ago. And if you look at the light version where they forecast the election solely based on the polls, based on the polls alone, the Democratic Party has a 64% chance of winning. That is how well the Democratic Party is doing in the polls right now. But of course, polls cannot always be trusted. And we're going to have to see how accurate they are this midterm cycle. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.